Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome students. Today we will do the miracles of chapter 2. I hope you have your calculator ready and your books and copies with you. So let's start with the miracle 2.1. Okay, a train moves with a uniform velocity of 36 km per hour for 10 seconds. Find the distance traveled by. Pretty easy numerical uh, uniform velocity is given to you, 36 km per hour. Uh, you have to, uh, please keep in mind that um, you have to convert the values into base units. So it's 36 km per hour, you will convert it into meter per second. Kilometer per hour is not a base unit, you need to convert it. Base unit are meter, second, uh, kilogram, and then you know the rest of the base units. So 36, how are you going to convert it? Kilometer per hour to meter per second. Obviously, kilometer, you will change kilometer to meter. Uh, since kilometer is a numerator, you will multiply uh, its converting value in numerator. That is one kilometer equals to 1,000 meter. So it's 36 multiplied by 1,000. Divide by 3,600. Uh, why? Because 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds. How? 1 hour has 60 minutes. 1 minute has 60 seconds. So uh, 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds. R is given in denominator. So uh, you will definitely be writing 3600 in denominator. And when you will solve it, you will get the value of 10 meter per second. Time over here is 10 seconds. You have to find the distance. S, S is equal to V into T. Pretty easy formula. Just simply put the values to get the result. Numerical 2.2, a train starts from rest. Okay, in lectures, I have been discussing uh, how you uh, should uh, be using the values. Uh, the train is starting from rest. You have to put initial velocity is equal to zero. Whenever you see a sentence like this, like an object starts from rest, a train starts from rest, a car starts from rest, so you have to put initial velocity equals to zero meter per second. It moves through one kilometer. Distance over here is given one kilometer. Uh, you will change this kilometer into meter. That is going to be 1,000 meters in 100 seconds. Time is 100 seconds with uniform acceleration. You don't, they haven't given you the value of acceleration, just mentioned that acceleration is uniform what will be its speed at the end of 100 seconds you have to find obviously final velocity at the end of 100 seconds so initial velocity is zero distance given obviously it's one kilometer final velocity you have to find it time is 100 seconds for why we are using second equation s is equal to vit plus half a t square so simply just put the values thousand is equal to zero into 100 plus half a t square. So value of acceleration comes out to be 0 0.2 meter per second square. You can definitely check uh, through the calculator these values. I did solve it, but I also want you to check these values as well. Now using first equation of motion, you will find the final velocity. Zero, we are, we are putting zero plus a 0 0.2 into 300. That is equal to 20 meter per second. So the speed, that is the final velocity at the end of 100 seconds is going to be 20 meter per second. 2.3, a car has a velocity of 10 meter per second. Initial velocity is given to you. They haven't said the car started from rest. So that is why you can't write VI0. Over here, it said that car has a velocity of 10 meter per second. So it means that when you started observing, uh, the car was already moving with a velocity of 10 meter per second. That, that is why you are taking initial velocity as 10. It accelerates at 0 0.2 meter per second square. Acceleration is given for half minute. Time is equal to half minute. Again, you need to convert it into base unit, which is second. So uh, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So half minute means that it's going to be 60 by 2. And that is 30, 30 seconds. Find the distance traveled. S, you have to find during this time. And the final velocity, V, S. Write down the data. Initial velocity, 10. Distance, question mark. Final velocity, you have to find it. Acceleration and then time. Okay. Now, 
<clears throat> to find the distance, very convenient second equation of motion is equal to VIT plus half AT squared. And uh, for final velocity, VF is equal to VI plus Simply just use the formulas, S is equal to 10 into 30, because VI into T plus half, this is A value into T squared. So you add up, you solve it, you get 390 meters. Now you have to find the final velocity, VF is equal to VI, VI value is 10 plus A into T. And you add up and you solve 16 meter per second. This is the distance traveled and the final velocity is this one. So, okay, 2.4. Let us jump to 2.4. A tennis ball is hit vertically upward with a velocity of 30 meter per second. A tennis ball is hit vertically upward with a velocity. It didn't say it didn't say anything like tennis ball was at rest or like you know any hint that its velocity initial velocity should be zero. It's just that it's hit vertically upward with a velocity. So uh, when uh, an observer started to observe it it saw, uh, yeah, he or she saw that ball was being hit with a velocity of 30 meter per second. So that's the initial velocity that you're going to take. It takes three seconds to reach the highest point. So the highest point, this is the diagram. I just took and, you know, it's pretty, it gets pretty convenient when you draw diagrams. So uh, it would be preferable. Yes, I would prefer uh, to draw diagrams because it really makes uh, our data and our calculations very easy, uh, very easy to visualize uh, what uh, the problem is about. It takes three seconds to reach the highest point. Yes, time is given, three seconds. Calculate the maximum height, the maximum height H you have to calculate, uh, reached by the ball and how long, how long means time. You have to find time it will take to reach to the ground. Okay, total journey, T, total time, going up then coming down that you, you have to find total time so initial velocity is 30 height edge total time the whole journey is question mark acceleration uh, since this uh, body is moving freely uh, free fall motion um, so you have to consider the value of g value of g is always 10 however uh, since we have to find the maximum height reached by the ball and during this point it is moving against the gravity we will take minus 10 meter per second square time we will take uh, okay so time is three seconds and this time is time of the whole journey uh, time going upward time of returning to the ground you add them up and you get the total time height you are going to find out using second equation of motion h is equal to vit plus half gt squared and you can think, why not? Uh, why aren't we using third equation of motion? Because in third equation of motion, uh, VF is also involved. And we, in, I made this uh, graph over here to make my calculations easy. A car moves with a uniform velocity with 40 meter per second for five seconds. So when you started observing the car, it was already moving with a uniform velocity. All right, and this is the graph for uniform velocity uh, of 40 meter per second for five seconds. So time over here, for five seconds, it was moving with 40 meter per second, and then it comes to rest. Rest means it comes to zero. This is the zero. This is the, the velocity is just zero. It comes to rest. And when it comes to rest, in the next 10 seconds. So basically, when you add 10 seconds and five, that adds up to 15. Five plus 10 is equal to 15. It means that, uh, 15 seconds your body uh, came to rest with uniform deceleration this line over here this slope represents uniform deceleration you have already discussed in graph find deceleration that is negative acceleration this part you have to find this part deceleration negative acceleration and the total distance total distance uh, already discussed in graph that the slope only gives you the value the magnitude of acceleration the area under the slope gives you the total distance covered by the object and that is what we are going to do we are going to find and since they have asked you to find the total distance traveled by the car it means you have to consider this part and this part as well okay now let's 
write down the data first. Initial velocity, vi is equal to 40 meter per second because when you started looking at the uh, velocity, when you started observing at the car, it was moving already with 40 meter per second. Deceleration, you have to find it. Total distance, you have to find. Final velocity is zero. Yes, the car came to rest, then final velocity was zero. Time, t naught is equal to five seconds for uniform velocity. For this journey, it's five seconds. And for this journey, for deceleration, it is 10 seconds. Now you have to use the formula. Okay, so <clears throat> since you need to find the acceleration, uh, you can conveniently use first equation of motion, Vf is equal to Vi plus At, and zero is equal to 40 into plus A into 10. Acceleration comes out to be minus four meter per second squared. Okay, so why am I taking time 10? Hmm. Because we are trying to find acceleration. And that is why we are, oh, I should have written over here, um, we, uh, I should have written acceleration because this is the acceleration. Let me do a little bit of correction over here. It's acceleration that we are looking at. Okay, now that is done. Put it in presentation mode. Okay, so we are find we are here to find acceleration a is equal to minus four meter per second square. For this part, deceleration it is, and you know this deceleration uh, occurred in uh, the next ten seconds. That is why I'm using time over here as ten. Okay. We have to find the total distance. The second part of the question. Uh, you can to use two methods to do so. Uh, firstly, uh, the simple one, uh, that is the area under the curve. You can take the area under the gradient. And this is S1. Let's suppose you divide this um, whole graph into two shapes, two geometrical shapes, and then you can apply the area for that geometrical shape. So S1, this part over here, this blue part, this shaded region, is the area of rectangle you are going to use. Area of rectangle, base into height, right? Base, you see, this is five, okay? And height, maximum height is 40. So five into 40 is 200 meters. And S2, again, this is triangle. You will use the formula for area of triangle, half into base into height, and half into base. Base is so it's 15 minus five, that is going to be 10, 10 seconds. That was already mentioned. This was the deceleration part. Deceleration took, uh, took place in the last 10 seconds. That is why 10 seconds. And the maximum height is 40 from where it started to decelerate from 40 to zero. So 40 minus zero obviously is 40. So 10 into 40, you solve it, it's 200. When you add them up, you get the total distance covered by the body, which is 400 meters. I did ask you all to uh, do a second method for this numeric, this part as well. And Aliha, very good beta, uh, you did an excellent job. Uh, she did find, she did use the equations of motion uh, to find the total distance. So for uh, first part, uh, let's see. Uh, when the body was moving with uniform velocity, then you don't need to write vi, vf since the velocity is uniform, uh, it's 40 meter per second. You just simply use the formula s is equal to v into t. Pretty easy formula. Just s is equal to v into t. So 40 into 5 is 200 meter. Then you, she used third equation of motion 2as is equal to vf square minus vi square. Yes. Over here, now looking at the deceleration graph, you just have to need to focus now on the deceleration graph. Deceleration graph, this point is your vi and it ended the motion ended uh, after 10 seconds uh, the final velocity became zero so you have to put vi as 40 and uh, your correctly very good beta aliha keep it up okay numerical 2.6 a train starts from rest with an acceleration of 0.5 meter per second okay so now over here a hint is given the train is starting from rest so initial velocity are going to take automatically zero, zero meter per second with an acceleration. Acceleration value is given 0 0.5. Find its speed. It means you have to find the final velocity in kilometer per hour. Okay, so now there is a compulsion that you will have to change meter per second into kilometer per hour. Um, 
so you need to do the conversion at the end it's very convenient uh, that you solve the numerical and do the conversions at the end when it has moved 200 meters so the distance given over here is 100 meter you use the data vi zero acceleration 0.5 vf question mark distance 100 meter now using this formula you can see vi vf a and s so these all physical quantities are hinting to third equation of motion 2as is equal to vf square minus v a square we will use it to take the square root the answer is 10 meter per second now the answer is 10 in meter per second the question says that you have to convert it into kilometer per hour how you multiply by 3.6 uh, or uh, since you're converting it into, into kilometer per hour so uh, obviously you're going to convert it you're going to change the values multiply by 3600 divide by 1000 and you get the answer of 36 kilometer per hour that is your result numerical 2.7 a train starting from rest okay you first draw a graph because you know drawing pictures uh, really makes it easy for you to uh, understand what the question requires and it really helps in solving the numericals so it will always be i would always prefer to all of my students to draw a diagram to you know so that you can get a concept of what you have to do in the medicals. A train starting from rest, you have to take a, a speed time graph, you will draw a graph and it's five minutes. So when you add five minutes to two, it is seven. So till seven minutes, you have to draw this straight line of 48 kilometer per hour because they are saying that it is traveling for this speed. This speed means 48 kilometer per hour for five minutes, five minutes. Finally, it moves with uniform retardation. Retardation means negative acceleration, deceleration. So from here, from this point, after uh, five minutes, you will draw a decelerating graph. You will draw a slope like this. And it stopped after three minutes. So when you add seven plus three, it is 10. So it means as, uh, uh, on 10 minutes, uh, after 10 minutes, it stopped. Uh, it, yeah, it said it stopped after three minutes. Find total distance. You have to find total distance. S1, S2, S3. This is how you're going to plot the graph. For two minutes, the body was accelerating uniformly from rest to 48. Then after five minutes, you add five to two, it, it adds up to seven. So you have to make a constant line of, uh, because it says that it was moving with this speed for five minutes. So yes, uh, it is seven. And then it said in the last three minutes, it traveled and it stopped. So last three minutes, seven plus three is 10. So you have to write 10 over here. And for the last three minutes, you have to draw a decelerating curve, decelerating slope. And the question requires, you have to find S1, S2, S3, the distance traveled by the train. As already discussed in previous lecture, the gradient only gives you the magnitude of acceleration. If you need to find the distance, you have to look under the gradient. So let's see. Now the data for, okay, we are dividing uh, this graph into parts, uh, O to A, then A to B, then B to C, then it will be easy for us to write the data for each path. So for path OA, we are going to write the data for it. Initial velocity over here, you can see it's zero, and final velocity is 48, 48 kilometer per hour. You can see the units over here, and time over here is given in minutes. So Oh, I wrote meter per second, very sorry. It's kilometer per hour. Let me change it, my mistake. Okay, it's kilometer per hour. Okay. Now distance, S1 is unknown. You don't know the area, or the distance covered by the body uh, under the gradient, you still don't know it. Final velocity is 48 kilometer per hour, you will change it into meter per second. Oh, where is my second? Okay, where is it? Perhaps uh, it went under the picture. Aha, here it is. Okay, here you are. So obviously I'm also going to write over here zero M slash S, yeah. 
Okay, few minor changes. So, uh, yes, 333.33 meter per second acceleration you don't know yet. And time given is two minutes. Two minutes is equal, you need to convert time minutes into seconds. So it's two into 60. Now that is, yes, because one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So you definitely you have to multiply it with 60. It's 120 seconds. For path A, B, for path A, B, again, uh, S2, you don't know. Uh, since the body was moving with this speed for five minutes, so you are not going to write any VIVF. You're just going to mention the average uh, speed that is 48. So you'll just simply write 48, 13.33, convert it. Yes. You know how to do the conversion from kilometer per hour to meter per second. You multiply 48 by 1,000, uh, multiply 48 with 1,000, and then divide it by 3,600, you get the value of 13.33. Acceleration is not known. Time is 5 minutes. You will convert 5 minutes into seconds. How? By multiplying it with 60. For path BC, for path BC, now you have to look at this curve only, deceleration curve. This is your initial point, your starting point from where the deceleration started. So you have to look at this point only. That was 48 kilometer per hour. From here, uh, your deceleration started. Okay, so let me write the values over here. Initial velocity is going to be 48 kilometer per hour, which is equal to 13.33 meter per second. Okay. <clears throat> distance is unknown. Final velocity since the body stopped after 10 minutes, final velocity is going to be zero meter per second. Obviously, kilometer per hour when you will convert it since the value is zero. So zero multiplied by anything or divide by anything is zero. So that's why I'm not going to make it more complicated. The deceleration occurred in the last three minutes. Last three minutes means it's multiply by 60 that adds um, the path OA let's find out since we don't know the acceleration first you will find the acceleration uh, using first equation of motion VF is equal to VI plus AT 13.33 is equal to 0 because initial velocity 0 plus A into 120 you will get the acceleration 0 0.11 you have to find the distance S this is going to be S1 because this is the area under the gradient or slope. You can also use uh, the geometrical shape <clears throat> of triangle, the formula for area of geometrical shape of a triangle, which is half into uh, base into height, and you will get the same result. Yes, you can try it out. Two and two, uh, I have done this, you can try it, and then you can definitely match your values. Two into acceleration into S1 is equal to 13.33 minus zero. When you solve it, you get the value 807.11 meter, which is equivalent to 800 meters rounded off. For path AB, for path AB, since the body was moving with uniform speed, so you just simply use the formula S is equal to V into T. 48 kilometer per hour, you will convert it into meter per second. That is going to be 13.33. Oh. Let's do it. So your answer is going to be S is equal to 13 point because they said the body was decelerating uniformly. So you will use the formula VF is equal to VI plus AT. VF, as I said, it is zero because the body, uh, you, will, you just have to look at the deceleration curve. So over here, the um, body came to rest at this point. So VF is zero is equal to and then you have VI, which was 48, which is 13.33, and <clears throat> plus acceleration you don't know. Multiply by time is three minutes. So it's three, three, one, eighty. Yeah. Acceleration comes out to be, hmm. Yeah, I have to solve it. And then you have to tell me the answer. Okay, using the calculator. Let's use the calculator. So it's 13.33. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
one divided by one eighty. So your answer is zero point zero seven four. 0.074 meter per second square. Okay. Now you have to find to find distance. So it's two multiply by and obviously there is going to be a minus sign with it. Minus sign shows that your body was decelerating. Two Divide by 0 0.074 multiply by S3. Okay, S3 is equal to it's VF square minus VI square. VF is 0, putting the value of 0, uh, 0 square minus, okay. I have to write yeah, it's thirteen point three three square. Mm -hmm. I have to do a little bit of okay. Let's do a little bit of changes over here as well. You do use a superscript. Okay. Hmm. Okay, it's going out of. So you get the value as when you solve it. S okay S three oh twelve hundred point six twelve hundred point six meter, which I'll take equivalent to twelve hundred meters. Oh, finally, so. Now what are you going to do? We're just simply going to add S1. Oh, this is S2. S2 and S3. So when you will add them, 800, 4,000, and 1,200, you will get the answer. Okay, let me write it over here as well. Okay. Do a little bit of changing in the, okay. So when I will add them, my total distance is going to be 800 plus 4,000 plus 500 is equal to, aha, yes. So this is my maximum height reached by the ball. You have to find the age, yeah, and initial velocity, aha. See, no initial velocity is given. So you are going to write VI is question mark. Height oh, is again question mark. Total time was six. Acceleration due to gravity. Since it is moving upward, so you are going to take the value as minus 10. Yeah. And you have to find, okay. So the upward time only, as already uh, discussed previously, I did discuss in the lectures uh when time uh, is six seconds the total journey is given to you so you divide that time into upward and downward journey that is you divide it by two so six divided by two is going to be three so your upward time is going to be three seconds and similarly the downward time is going to be three seconds now you have to find the maximum height and the initial velocity reached by the ball now let's see so <clears throat> Let's solve it. So height, you don't know. Initial velocity, uh, okay. You don't know the initial velocity as well. So you need to find initial velocity first. Let's find initial velocity first. So final velocity, obviously at height, final velocity is zero is equal to initial velocity you don't, you don't know yet. So you just simply you copy paste it. Okay, copy pasting it and then plus and uh, since the value is minus 10, you write that value, and then it's t, t is three, because it's the half part, okay, half portion, and solve it, so it's, uh, mm, okay, it's 30 meter per second is equal to 
we are. Okay. Yeah. Now let's find H. H is equal to VI. VI is 30. We did solve it. Okay, now so many changes that you have to. Okay, then time is 3. And then, okay, move this 2 over here. So that equation gets perfect. Half AT square, uh, GT square, sorry. It's free fall. So minus 10. And it's three. So it's going to be 90 over here. And then with this minus sign, you cancel it out to five, so 10 and five, nine, so 45. So your answer is going to be 45 meters. So you have to add the result over here that the initial velocity was 30 meter per second. And the height that it reached was 45 meter. The varical two point line, uh, when brakes are applied, the speed of train decreases from 96 km per hour to 48 km per hour in 800 meters. So, firstly, please do uh, make a habit of drawing a diagram so that it becomes convenient for you to extract the data from it. When brakes are applied and then the train decreases, it means you need to draw a decelerating graph. So we'll draw a speed time graph. Uh, with a deceleration uh, and they have given the value that it is 96 km per hour to 48 km per hour. So from 96 to 48, it covered a distance of 800 meters. Distance is given to you, 800 meter. How much further will the train move? It means from this point onward, how much distance it's going to move before coming to rest. So what is the distance? You have to find the distance. So I've divided into A, B, and B, C path. A, B path, you know the distance is 800 meters, but you don't know the distance for B, C path. And then the train took the area under that B, C path, actually, yeah, this B, C path. So for path A, B, for path A, B, you uh, write the initial velocity as, uh, you have to do the conversions as well, 96 kilometer per hour, which is going to be in meter per second. You have to do the conversion, 96 kilometer per hour into meter per second is going to be 26.66. Let me write the value of meter per second, 26.66 meter per second. And then, <clears throat> okay, so everyone can see, I hope, my values. So S1 is 800 meter, final velocity for path AB, obviously. And you will convert 48 into meter per second, that is multiplied by 1000 divided by 3600, you get the answer of 13.33 meter per second. Okay. I need to... And these are my vectors. That is why, yeah. Okay, for path BC. For path BC, S2 is unknown. You don't know yet, initial velocity. Now, for path BC, initial velocity changes. Uh, initial velocity, now you will consider this point. This point is 48. From 48, you will consider, so it's 13 point. I'm writing the converted form. That is from 48 to uh, kilometer per hour to meter per second value i'm writing it in meter per second final velocity is zero meter per second now <clears throat> you have to find the distance how much further it travels so firstly uh, we can use vf is equal to vi no we can't use first equation of motion. Okay, let's look at second equation of motion. S is equal to VIT plus half AT square. Time is not given, so we can't use second equation of motion. Uh, and obviously we don't know acceleration as well. Uh, they have just written over here, assuming retardation to be constant, but they haven't given the value of retardation, that is negative acceleration. Let's look at third equation. So let third equation says 2AS is equal to VF square minus VS square. So I guess we will be using uh, 2AS is equal to VF square minus VS square. It will be convenient for us. So let's cut out these equations. Yeah, this one is an unnecessary one. I don't think so. We'll be requiring it. And same over here as well. 
So this is the formula that we will use. First, we will use this formula to find the acceleration, and then we will use the same formula to find S2. Yeah. To find A. Okay, so the equation of motion 2 AS is equal to Vx square minus Vx square. So the acceleration over here, when you solve it, you get acceleration as A is equal to, oh my God. A is equal to, hmm, when you solve it, you get the value of minus, okay, it's minus 0 0.33 meter per second square. Okay, <coughs> this square, you have to write it in the script. To find S2, now when you solve it, you have to find S2, and two, put the value, minus you know, uh, changing you might be getting some different answer with these decimals but it's uh it is the answer that is in your book okay so this is my answer and do solve it and let me know what was your answer and numerical 2.10 in above problem find the time taken by the train to stop after the application of brakes. Now you have to find the time. Same numerical as above, 2.9, take 96, uh, the value of 96 in meter per second, that is going to be 26.66. Oh, what has happened to it? Change the font. Yeah, it's, okay, I have to remove it. So it's 26.66. Six, six. Why is it like this? Changed. Okay, now it's better. And VF is zero. Acceleration is minus. What was the acceleration? Let me see. Minus. Okay, minus zero point three three that you calculated in two point nine. Time you have to find it out. You will use VF is equal to VI plus AT. B, F, B, I, A, and T. Very convenient using first equation of motion. Now let's solve it. V, F, okay, zero. V, I is 26.66 plus A is minus 0 0.33 into time that you have to find. So it's easy. T is equal to, oh, sorry. I have to write small t. So when you solve it, you get the value of 80.7, 80.78 seconds. Or you can round it off to 80. Yeah. And when you, when there are so many decimals, 26.6666 and 0.33333, so you divide them, you get the answer of 80.78 uh, seconds. Do let me know what were your answers when you were solving them. Just round them off and you write 80 seconds. So these are the numerical girls. Uh, you have to do them in your copy. This is your home assignment. You have to do all the miracles in your copy, and there is a test on Monday. Article 2.6, 2.7, and the miracles. Okay, if you still have any problem in this lecture, uh, solving the miracles, you find any problem, do contact me on my WhatsApp number. Take care. Allah Hafiz.